Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to try and address some of the claims made by apologists regarding the innate or the built-in belief that children have towards believing gods exist. Now, there's a number of these claims around, and what I'm going to do is I'm first going to look at uh, how, how these claims came about and who propagates them, and then show a scientific study which demonstrates exactly the opposite. But first, I'm going to take a look at how the claims come around that children believe that gods exist. But then, if this were built in, shouldn't it logically be the same belief in the same supernatural entity? Like we all have a built-in function known as a smile or a wave of the hand. Unlike language, which is dependent on parents and region. Shouldn't a universal built-in gene, if it is in fact a gene, a god gene, be exactly that, universal? Shouldn't the requirements or demands by this god be universal too? Why are there entire tribes on the planet without it? Why did I never have this god gene, even though I was raised in a religious household and in an ultra-conservative Muslim country, known today as the Islamic Republic of Iran? Why are there discrepancies within identical twins where one believes the other one doesn't, and even in single brains when they are damaged in some way? Now, since I'm labelled as stupid or deaf, dumb and blind, let me examine exactly how valid this claim of a built-in belief is, this innate belief, and where it comes from. First off, According to those who hold that we have this built-in disposition to worship gods, those who have conducted experiments and have proven that the god belief is indeed an innate belief, those are the real scientists, the better scientists. Because the Muslim scholar Ibn Tamiya said, corroboration and affirmation of the maker is firmly rooted in the hearts of all men and jinn. According to some apologists, Islamic apologists or Islamopists, who have even come up with a word describing this, the fitra. The real scientists have performed real experiments and the wording indicates that this is based on facts and reality for once. Who are these real scientists and what experiments have they conducted? On whom? Doing what? Using what equipment? With what definitions? for what kind of a process, what assumptions, and most importantly, with what results. Where can I find their documentation, the data, and their findings? Have they then dissected the heart to find the fitra embedded there somehow? <laughs> Hardly. We all know that this is nonsense, spiritual mumbo jumbo. So what happens when you move away from the emotions and the pleading and go into facts? Because going through the claims, I see two names appear time and again. Dr. Justin Barrett and Dr. Oliveira Petrovich. Just two, these two. So it should be easy enough. American-born Dr. Barrett was a researcher, a Christian researcher at Oxford Center for Anthropology and Mind. His intro says he's developing a Christian mind in Oxford. Oh boy. He looks for God and predictably finds one everywhere but naturally only his favorite version of a god. Just like people with near-death experience always find their favorite god figure when they're dead. Isn't that funny? And this made another scientist upset and he chastised Dr. Barrett. The other guy is professor of philosophy at the University of London, Dr. Grayling. He pointed out that Dr. Barrett had simply ignored all evidence of the opposite and that the most primitive religion is animistic i.e. dependent on a soul and spirits, something toddlers can't grasp yet. Come on, this is obvious. And other scientists agree, and one professor of psychology at the Concepts and Cognition Lab at Berkeley, and Dr. Tanya Lombroso, even showed that her experiments with brain damaged patients yielded similar results. And looking at the world as a function, picking the teleological choice rather than the rational one. Confronted with this, Barrett had to retract his claims and then lamely replied that I do not say that religion is hardwired or innate, rather than children have propensities to believe in gods. 
because of how their minds naturally work. Saying absolutely nothing. Goodbye, scientist. Welcome, Bible puncher. Looking at the author, Barrett, we get pages and pages, but only of speeches and essays. As soon as you narrow it down to journal articles, it somehow withers away. All that is left is a few observations on the virtues of summer camp. He constantly uses phrases like, evidence suggests that, without ever providing this evidence. All you get is more claims. So it's not surprising that in his speeches he frequently refers to what others are saying and further studies and their scientific studies on this topic without ever providing one or referencing it. Never. Only some books. It's always it could be, possible, might. Come on, that's hardly scientific. So I research this and summarize it as children and adults have a tendency to see the natural world as having function for in early childhood, we have a natural tendency to attribute super properties and so on. Children commonly invent invisible friends. Wow. <clears throat> it may be that we have to be talked out of beliefs in the afterlife rather than talking to them. Come on. Religious beliefs and practices might persist in part because they make more cooperative and generous with us. And it shows just how dishonest this Barrett guy is. There is nothing concrete here, just some wishy-washy terms and suggestions. We might as well be talking about Superman. All he does is talk about others who agree with his idea that kids will believe gods exist, if they are told gods exist. No experiments were ever mentioned which showed anything conclusive. Never. There was never a group of children of a specific age group compared to a similar group, one indoctrinated with god beliefs and the other left well, unindoctrinated, as it were, who were tested for their levels of belief in the supernatural. Never. So quoting Barrett in this context is intellectually dishonest and demonstrates a huge amount of laziness and the inability to perform research at an academic level. And the other name that persistently pops up? Ah yes, Dr. Petrovich. What does she say about this? Well, nothing. She claims a detailed report is in preparation, and she's done so for years. Where is this report? Nobody knows. What is interesting is that she seems to have shifted from a general to a more limited God research. It's a shame that educational institutions allow this kind of nonsense. Looking at her publications, nothing has happened since I looked at this in connection with exposing sources as a habitual liar. Only nine publications, mostly essays, Nothing on experiments, testing supernatural beliefs in kids. On her academic activities, she has clarified that, and I quote, I research and teach a course titled Developmental Questions in Science and Religion. And I'm also a member of the theology faculty where I give lectures in psychology of religion, end quote. She reiterates the point I've made several times that thus the need for targeted research. She also states, and come on, this is since 2008, that regarding skeptics, and I quote again, a great deal more space than even a few articles will be needed to convince the skeptics that evidence is possible when it comes to the question of how we think about God. So, come on, in the last seven or eight years, she's managed exactly zilch, nothing. She continuously mentions an upcoming book, never delivers it. She constantly talks about research and evidence and provides neither. And I need to admit, some of her ideas, they are quite interesting. But without data, they're useless. Then you have the problematic terminology. Come on, you can't label a seven-year-old as an infant. A seven-year-old has very much different thought patterns than a three-year-old. And she talks about causality and then mentions God a lot. Now, where and how would a child without any religious indoctrination make the connection between a creator and a personal God, one which intervenes on a continuous basis? How can a three-year-old create a concept of a God? Kids eventually learn what a tree is and what gods are, and Santa, and they learn to dismiss Santa and then gods. Well, or well not. Is the dismissal of Santa an acquired development? Of course it is. It comes with logics, empirical observation capabilities, and rational thinking. Just as useful as any acquired knowledge. Nothing wrong with that. 
And come on, by now everyone knows that saying God did it is much easier than going off and doing the work and finding out what is really happening out there. And that's why God did it is not an explanation at all. And all I learned from this is that people have idols, some as gods and others as motivational personas, where Muslims worship Muhammad much more than I worship pretty actresses or singers in my teens. So after looking at what people like Barrett or Petrovich are writing, it is very clear to me that there is no research, there is no data and there are no findings which would indicate that kids would develop a belief in the Christian or Islamic God when left to their own devices. Maybe I don't know, they could come up with a higher dimension, aliens or something which would be, for example, a short term explanation for the existence of the universe. I mean, for the uneducated mind. But then science comes around and fixes that. And when you dig a bit deeper, you occasionally see other names popping up now and again, like Kellerman and, and Bloom, people who have commented on the subject. But here the research goes along the lines of purpose-driven reactions to questions around nature, you know, teleological promiscuity, which due to their simple wording seems intuitively true. For example, people buy vacuums because they suck up dirt. Yeah, followed by Earth has an ozone layer to protect it from UV rays. No, <laughs> but a child which will take a question like why are there trees and see a useful reason before thinking about the correct background and therefore will say so that birds can sit on it or so that dogs have something to pee against or whatever. This childlike purpose driven reasoning is also found in adults when under time pressure. Hence the overwhelmingly wrong answer to the ozone layer question above, especially when the subjects were not scientifically educated. People don't always use the more developed brain areas and tend to think with the basic instincts present also in children. And that's nature for you. It's pretty easy to understand and follow. So why inject an artificial and false element into this? The problem is that dishonest people are now writing comments on this, hiding their bias and false assumptions between the lines, carefully injecting words like indicate or seems. The wording is quite clever and quite possibly fools a gullible person seeking confirmation and only hunting for sound bites they can quote mine. About atheism has some examples of this where someone takes bits and pieces and shows how they can be adjusted until they conform what he then brings up from out of the Quran. Very clever, highly dishonest and most deceptive. So what we have is that Muslim apologists are lying. That's all, nothing else. All they have is their personal unsubstantiated opinion. And that's not a lot, is it? So what about the opposite now? Are there studies which show that children are not hardwired to believe in creators and gods? Yes, there are. When researchers tried to verify the claims made by Barrett, they discovered the exact opposite. And in this article, Barrett is described as having spent his lifetime on claiming kids need a god and then how this has been shot down in a real scientific study. This study not only showed that kids don't automatically arrive at God belief, but also shows how believing kids are more gullible, unable to separate fiction from reality and facts. And this is a scientific study. This shows the methodology, the numbers, the approach and the exact procedures. Judgments about fact and fiction by children from religious and non-religious backgrounds is a study the way it should be conducted. You get 30 pages of precise information, nothing vague or wishy-washy here. They show exactly what was done and how, and they demonstrate why they arrive at a conclusion and back this up with data, showing that no, children do not have a built-in propensity to believe in gods. All we have are children, children and their brains learning, children and the tendency to explain what is obvious to them. 
So I hope we can now lay this to rest and bury these childish claims. Thanks for your time.